the album itself is a whole process through healing i think um listening to it lyrically you've left nothing off the table and i commend you for that um because as a as a, as a writer and a performer and an artist you know mm-hmm. you captivate your audience um a lot of people perform for their audience you definitely have an audience that is drawn into you as a human being and and i can imagine mm-hmm. at times that's meant that you felt like you needed to protect yourself even from the people mm-hmm. who love you the most but yeah. you've really dropped the guard on this one and you've let yourself completely wide open in a vulnerable way um mm-hmm. i feel we have to just have touch on some of the subject matter and lyrics on this album but i, I sort of want you yeah. to pick it up i don't want to ask a question i want to follow you oh okay okay well um this, the album is is obviously um, as good of a picture of heartbreak as I could do, and I <laughs> as you can hear, <laughs> Ooh, yeah, and um, and also I realized as I was kind of untangling a lot of knots in myself mm. um, that I there are just so many ways that I learned how to love that we're not right and unlearning something that you're 31 years in on is really tough and so some of the stuff that I talk about on pedals for armor it's like I'm still in those processes and honestly if we had toured pedals for armor I probably wouldn't have gotten to get to the underbelly like I probably thought I was there and I wasn't even close. You and were ready for more distraction, right? You were ready for more like applause and more lights yeah. and more like, cool, this is really great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because because being out there and being so busy all the time and having people, you know, even though there are times it feels you feel naked because there's a lot of eyes on you, it's the most insulated that I ever feel is being on tour. Insulation of touring and the desire to go out potentially and distract yourself without even realizing that's what you're doing, but you can't, so you have to stay still again. Yes, and and also oh very quiet because, you know, even going to the grocery store felt like an offense and also like terrifying yeah. for a while. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I think so. One of my favorite songs on the record is called "In Ordinary," mm. and. The reason that I uh, have such a, um, a reaction to it is that I, I think I started talking about something small and, and like an incident in my life. And then it kind of blooms into, you know, it goes from like belo- wanting to belong to someone and then belonging to a lot of people and then belonging with somebody and then realizing, oh, man, I I can barely remember what it feels like to just belong to myself. And I got to kind of experience a a long period of time in this, however many minutes this song is. And I'm really, really proud of that. I, I always reference back to my seventh grade year when mom and I moved to Nashville. We kind of, um, we, we did run away, like quite literally. And we, we came here for, to seek refuge and we also had some family friends in town and that's kind of how we got on our feet here. But that's when everything in my life opened up. That's when I met the guys. That's when music became in, within reach for me. Like, right. I learned to play the guitar and, you know, it just, I, I, I'm really proud of this album because it's as much of a songwriter's album as, I've ever made. You talk about this person who's who at times has a very timid nature when it comes to actually expressing yourself, especially in light of other people's ability. And yet you yeah. find this courage and confidence to go out on stage. And I've seen Paranormal Man. I mean, when you come out, it's just like this bolt of lightning. And I and mm. I wonder what it takes out of you or how you prepare yourself to actually be that person who makes sure everyone has a good time and gets the Paramore experience. Mm. How, how do you sort of put on the costume, the superhero armor to be able to go out there and be that person and then know that that, that, that it's not necessarily like there are show offs, man. There are people who go on stage who are literally like, I'm born to do it, you know, and they'll be <laughs> yeah, like that off stage. Yeah. Whereas you are a contradiction in that regard, I, I feel. Yeah. And yeah. And it's, that's like a, an uncomfortable thing about me that I feel like I can feel the push and pull of it oftentimes when I have to go between something that I'm doing that might be very public facing and then my life at home with my family or my friends. Mm, I, mm, mm. I I do think that there is something incredible about the energy that being 
you know, in solidarity with your friends on a stage and playing show, it, it, that brings me a lot of strength that I don't credit to myself maybe as much as I should. Cause I, I do know that it's in me all the time, but I, I guess I just don't tap into it. I, I, I heard Dolly Parton say this really incredible quote recently about, I think she was talking more about business, but it kind of applies here. She was talking about how she tries to, she tries to strengthen the muscles around her heart, but her heart is her heart can't get hard. It has to stay soft and it has to stay mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. open, mm -hmm. which means you feel hard and you hurt, but you've got to fight. Like I'm in it right now. I'm just trying to figure out ways to strengthen myself, despite the things I've been through, despite like everything mm -hmm. I wrote about with pedals for armor and things that I wrote about on this record. Like I am a, a very strong, resilient person um, but it just comes with the territory, I guess, for me that when a feeling comes, when it, when, when it happens, it's, you know, it's possible that it can take me out if I don't understand how to harness it. I never knew you and your mum ran to Nashville. I mean, I, I, I you know, with this yeah. being hints of the stories, I don't realize that it was literally pack your bags. We're out of here. Um, oh, yeah. you know, I, I wonder kind of how much that is reflected in your career choice. Let me qualify mm. that, that, that statement. Um, you know, you go searching for a new family and you find a, and you find an, a, a way to run every day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I'm addicted to the, to the feeling. That's something I work on, you know, we got to get out of here. We're done. Yeah. Like the show's over yeah. next stop. Yeah. And you, you'd be hard pressed to find someone better prepared or or proactive um in times of crisis like when when it hits the fan find me because i will figure out how to we will not leave a trace you know what i mean mm -hmm. and i and i think that's it's because of the that i i don't even think it's all because of things i actually went through physically with my mom but i think that it's um it's almost like my mom and I have been talking a lot about the concepts of general tr uh, generational trauma and generational prayer. And I think generational traumas come up a lot because of what we've talked about over the past year. Finally, more and more people are willing to talk about systemic racism, right? And yep, yep. what this has done to a lineage of folks. But for me, even just within my own family story, the women went through a lot of way before I was an idea, you know, mm -hmm. and certainly before mm -hmm. I was born. And, you know, I, I think I just picked up on that at a young age and we actually ran to Nashville two times. And the first time we kind of got found and you would think like, oh, you're not, you shouldn't go back to the same place. But we, for whatever reason, Nashville was the spot. Like my mom, we, b both of us, I loved music. I really wanted to be here. And I, I don't know. I, I think my mom is a super brave and super resilient person. and I. I'm grateful to have that, um, that North star sometimes, because when I don't feel resilient, I can kind of look at what she's been through and be like, that's in me, you know? You know, the early impressions of Paramore when you first came out was that, and we spoke about this a little bit, but not in relation to this conversation was that, you know, it, it, you were born to do it and it, it was recognized within someone, potentially your mom or someone else. And everything was built around this ambition that you, this desire that you had to be a musician and a performer and mm -hmm. that it was all just kind of like all roads lead to Haley. That was kind mm -hmm. of the way Paramore was positioned amongst, I would say probably either the insiders or at worst, the cynics. Um, yeah, yeah. You, you know, and I wonder when you think back to that moment, you just talked about, I wanted to be a musician. My mom chose Nashville, all the pictures and the pieces come together in that moment. Mm -hmm. when whether or not um, there was less cynical, but more purist, this mm. kind of manifestation of a new destiny based around your passion. Oh yes, man. Yes. I, I don't, I don't think of the move to Nashville so much about um, my career, you know, in context of my career, as much as I do in context of survival, like it, it gave my mom and I, um, a chance to live in a more peaceful, um, home. And, you know, my, the rest of my family, my dad's side of the family eventually came up to Nashville. And, um, you know, my mom and my dad had been divorced for a long time at that point and they were friends. So it, 
yeah, it was a really, it was a beautiful, magical time that time, which, and that's, that's why I bring it up in that song in ordinary, because I feel like I really became a person then. And it felt like the ideas, the wild dreams that I had as a kid weren't that crazy anymore. It sounds like the last 12 months, there's been complications, as you said, on a global level, but you've had to, you've had to navigate and you've had to charter a path through this. You did so through music. I'm, you know, I yeah. feel compelled based on the quality of the songwriting and the amazing ability to be able to capture heartache on this, on this, on this album. Um, it feels very, very fresh. It feels very real. I'm, mm. I'm not sure I've ever truly gotten the right answer or, 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 or in a, in a, you know, never really asked this question before, which is what does it feel like when you are experiencing it in a very, very real, very fresh way, but you're actually navigating your way through it creatively as opposed to stewing in it, which most of us do because we don't have the yeah. option to write. And even people who do often choose mm -hmm. not to until they have some clarity of thought. I don't feel like there's yeah. a lot of clarity of thought here, except ex everything that you're experiencing in the moment. Mm. Yeah, I'm normally that type of artist that you're talking about. I'm normally one who likes to have hindsight kind of information, you know, to, yeah. to build a song with, um, well, that's where your imagination think, lives, <laughs> you know, yeah. that's when you can yeah. incorporate a little bit of like, uh, the facts are the facts depending on which way you look at it. Yeah. But I don't get a lot of that here. It's so raw. Oh man. Well, yeah, it, it's hard for me to, to listen to, um, which I, I, I told you, you know, it, it's not, it's not a record I'm going to like pop on and be like, ah, this feels what great. A shame. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, I lived it. And, um, and also at the same time, it's like, it's, it is, it is so raw and so of the moment, but it also is such a culmination of all the lessons I've learned throughout, like, multiple relationships that just were what's the word um that, that just felt like I was my own body was like eating itself you know it just mm. it I just I, I just haven't had a great relationship with a, a good enough relationship with myself to receive pure and simple stuff like you know, like romantic, romantic relationships, you know, and I've been in therapy now since we got home from after laughter and I still go every week. I'm very fortunate that I can do that. Um, but I like the writing all of this stuff was kind of my, I didn't know I was writing songs. If, I mean, I know it's, that probably seems hard to believe, but a lot of them before we got into the studio were just half songs, like things that, you know, I would just turn on my voice memo on my phone and like barely mumble through some stuff. And then I was able to sort of make sure that I was crafting it right once we were in the studio. But it, it felt, I, I mean, it's, hard, it's really hard to answer your question because the days you wake up when you are feeling anything akin to heartbreak or grief, it doesn't feel, n nothing feels real. Nothing feels real or right. And you question every move that you make. You question if you're doing something in vain, you question your, all your motives. And, and you also just kind of question the point of anything. And so I think everyone was kind of feeling that way as it was just the being the year that we all had. Um, and I think knowing that was actually helpful. It was helpful to know, like, I can't be the only person feeling a bad feeling or something, you know, being struck with grief 